Hello everybody, I'm Chef Ben and this is Dinner with Ben. Uh, we are on episode three of season two and tonight we are making cauliflower soup, haddock gratin and rice pudding. And of course this is brought to you by Ashworks, cutting boards and tea north organic carbonated iced tea and Atlantic live stream. Yet again, thank you so much. And I'm joined tonight by my good friend, Bob, Bob Hewish. He's a professor at Dal and a world traveler. Bob, thanks for coming. Thank you, Ben. Pleasure to be here. Why, are you, why are you talking in a TV voice? I, I, I sometimes I wind up on TV, but... Bob got weird you know, as soon as the cameras came on. I've, I've, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to put my hat on here. Here we hi, go. Hi, Sue. Hi, Bob. Barb. Hi, Mike. Hello, everybody. Okay. Bob, how would you rate your culinary skills? Um, I certainly love food. It's all I eat. Uh, but I'm probably dangerously underqualified for most of the things that I do in a kitchen. Okay, that's all right. That's no problem. That's good. You're going to help me through this? Not at all. Okay, I'm just going to, I actually, I'm going to drink some whiskey. I'm going to stand over there and just watch you crash and burn. As long as we have good insurance, we're fine. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is pop the oven on. Okay. So we're just going to go uh, 400, which is kind of our standard temperature here. Okay, so oven's on. So there's a few things we need to do first. We need to get the potatoes cooking, and we need to get the rice on for the rice pudding. So we'll actually get the rice on first. Rice on first. Who's on first? The rice it's is on first. It's the rice. First. That's right. <laughs> so we're going to dump that in there. We have about a cup. How much is this? About a cup of about rice. About a cup, okay. Yep. Perfect. And now we're going to uh, put double that much water. Woo. So we're just going to just about up to there. You got it. Uh, hot water preferably. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming, as usual. Nice to see you all. Uno? Yep, perfect. Okay, so we have about a cup of basmati rice in here. Oh, less than that. A little bit less. Yeah, perfect. Alrighty. So we have about a cup of basmati rice and two cups of water. And we're just going to bring this to a boil, just like... Uh, did we do rice last week? I think so. Just like any other time we do rice, we're going to bring this to a boil Put a lid on it and simmer it for 17 minutes. Okay, so we'll do that to start. So we'll pop this on here, uncovered, bring it to a boil, put the lid on, reduce the heat, uh, and let it, let it simmer for 17 minutes. 17 minutes. 17 minutes. Okay, so the next step, Bob, I'm gonna get you to come over here. I'm here. And we're gonna take care of some of these potatoes. Do you know what kind of potato this is? Is that a fingerling potato? It is a fingerling potato. Good, good for you. I love trivia. Bob does love trivia. He's actually, I would say, the captain of the trivia team that I am happy and lucky enough to be a part of. We're it. currently in fourth place. Fourth place. You would love your support. Um, so uh, in the ingredients list, I said Yukon Gold potatoes, mm -hmm. but I actually couldn't get any Yukon Gold today. So we're going to use fingerlings. Uh, the, do you know why we want to use like a Yukon Gold or a fingerling potato? Is it something to do with the moisture? Uh, sort of. So these are actually really waxy potatoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they hold their shape really well when they're cooked. Oh, good. And that's what we want. So if you're making like a potato salad, a potato like this is what you're looking for. Right. So, so like a russet would just sort of be... Exactly. Blah. So normally I wouldn't peel these, but for the application today we're going to. And we're just going to peel about, uh, let's say, seven or eight of them. Seven okay? or eight? Yeah. All right. Here we go. So and Yukon Gold is not available. I couldn't find any, but the grocery store wasn't super... Uh, I had to go to two different grocery stores because one of them didn't have whole milk. What? Yeah, Superstore didn't have whole milk today. For that seems reason. like a really important thing for a grocery store to have. Yeah, it seems like a pretty basic thing. Oh, man. Have you ever got, had to go to two different dentists at the same time? Uh, no. Well, that's a terrible experience. I guess I have to ask. Another time, Ben. Another okay, time. Okay. Uh, no, that has never happened. Hello, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try your name. I'm sorry, Alessandria. Is that right? Hello, Anastasia. Hello, Brad. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bob, I feel like you've never peeled a potato before. How would I do this with more efficiency? Okay, it's on the floor, Ben. <laughs> okay, we'll pick that. We'll pick that one up and we'll we'll wash it off. Can we turn it into a plant or something. Okay. So, what I would suggest is hold, in, so you're kind of holding a potato in this grip. Yep. Hold it flat in your hand, and then just drag. That's much easier. Yeah, that way you're like peeling way more of the potato, right? Right. Okay, I'm gonna let you let's get give, back to let's that. Get a, let's do that. Then we're just gonna pop the potatoes 
in this pot when they're peeled. No kidding. That's like tripled my efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, it's much easier. No kidding. Well, well done. Um, Alessandria, I think I'm saying that right, said you use a knife to be more efficient. You could use a knife. But I don't, I don't necessarily trust Bob. And the problem with using a knife uh, for peeling potatoes. And not just trust Bob with a knife, just trust, I don't really trust Bob <laughs> full stop. That's the. Uh, with a knife. That's the implication. The problem with using a knife to peel potatoes is that unless you're very skilled with it, you end up losing way more potato than you need to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I always use a peeler. Okay. Yeah. If you are in a spot where you do have to use a knife to peel a potato, any particular type of knife you'd recommend? Paring knife. Paring a knife. A small knife. Okay. You don't want to use like a chef's knife no. to peel a potato. I think that would take the fingernail right off. Hi, Kathy. Oh, this thing, this will take your fingernail off too. I've had that happen more than once. I feel like it's going to happen. Oh, with that attitude, Bob. See, anything is possible if you wish for it. Do you know who said that? You? Peter Pan. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. I actually, interesting fact, I played Peter Pan in high school. No. I did. Really? Yes, I did. That's a good role. Yeah. How was the turnout? Uh, it was good. We sold out Alderney Landing, five shows. F that's almost enough to make it into Variety Magazine. Yeah. Well done. I was also the lead in Hair. You know that play? Isn't there a big nude scene in that? Yeah, we didn't do that. Okay. In high school. Okay, okay. Uh, and in Footloose. Footloose. There you go. That's not bad. You're, you're learning something new about me. There you go. Food, music, art, together at last. This is a little one. It's okay. This is exactly why I have guests on. Because I would have been done this like seven minutes ago. But there's people at home cooking. And I'm going at their speed. Exactly. Right? That's it. So if anyone else is having trouble with potato, just send us a message. Sue said she uses her husband to peel. That's a, that's a wise tool. She finds him appealing. <laughs> oh, my God. The well played, Sue. Well played. The jokes are happening. I like it. Okay, the rice is boiling. I'm just going to pop a lid on it, turn the heat down to low, timer up to 17. Nice. Now, Ben, did that rice boil quicker because we weren't looking at it? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> it's just the perception of time. It's not actually the effect of time. And we are having fun, and time is flying. That is true. We're already eight minutes into this thing. What? Yep. It takes me, like, exactly a minute of potato? Pretty much, yep. Oh, that's terrible. Yep. Sure. You're not, uh, you're not going to be getting any jobs in restaurants anytime soon. Thank God. So let's just make that a known fact. <laughs> and, uh, you know. So, Bob, you speaking of work, you're a professor at Dow. I am. And what do you teach at Dow? So I'm in the Department of International Development Studies. And that's a, uh, it's quite an interesting program. It brings out a lot of diversity in both what we teach and both the students that come to us. The idea is we look at issues on a global scale that involve poverty, social justice, <coughs> activism and trying to make the world a little bit better one day at a time there you go so and you get to travel all over the world i do and when i do travel i do try to eat as much as i possibly can and try to oh that's a bad move what you just did there that's a bad move what man. happened uh never ever hold the blade up if you can avoid it this is a really good safety video because i've right i've here. literally seen people doing things with their knife like this for whatever reason and no. then go to put their hand down fools yeah so don't oh. always always keep the knife like this if you need to scrape it keep the knife completely flat and then just kind of scrape up like that perfect don't drag the blade across no. but if you're flat it's okay okay so flat but um, never ever put the knife up like that except there's only one application and that's if you have herbs and you need to bruise them then really quickly but other than that on the side yeah excellent okay so we have our potatoes here um we just have eight seven uh peeled uh fingerling potatoes we're just gonna rinse them in cold water all right just to get any ex excess yeah, starch yeah. off yeah and then we're gonna just cover them by about an inch with hot water and then we're going to put some salt in there. Okay. So we'll put this here. And I'm going to let you add the salt in there. What are you looking at? A little bit? 
A, uh, a little bit to me is a, is not a little bit to a lot of people. So throw that in there. Let's see. No, more of that. More than so that? So what you're doing. Same uh, amount. Yeah. So this, the whole sprinkle, that's only really important if you have, like, something that you're trying to cover. With this, just, just in. pop so it in. Yep. There. Exactly. Oh, Perfect. man, that felt good. Yeah, it feels good, and yep. it just it saves you time. Oh, thank God. Okay, so we have our rice on. We have 14 minutes left on that. Our potatoes are just on. Uh, let's get to making some soup. Soup it is. Although I just realized I used the pot that I was supposed to use for the soup. Hmm. Shit. I didn't time this out very well. That's all right. Uh, There's a smaller pot. Yeah, that's too small, though. Uh -oh. I guess we're going to use a bigger pot. Okay. We're going to use a really big pot that's a big for this. Pot. So I'm going to switch these over here. We're going to move some things around. We're getting crazy. Okay, so we need an onion. Now this soup, uh, I was saying to Bob before we turn the cameras on that this is a teensy weensy cauliflower. Last time uh, I bought cauliflower, which was like two weeks ago, they were huge and they mm -hmm. were really cheap. It was like two bucks. This little tiny thing was like six bucks and it was the only one I could find that wasn't rotten. Um, had I had actually done some research, I wouldn't have done this soup today. Right. But I put it on the menu and I already put the ingredients list out, so we're going to do it. Um, we're going to puree this soup, so how we cut the vegetables doesn't really matter that much as long as they're small enough to be pureed. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to get you, we're just going to slice that onion. So we'll peel it first, so cut the ends off first. That's a really sharp knife. It is a really sharp That's knife. That's amazing. Kathy says that she's impressed with my guest, and so is Alessandria. Good stuff. So I'm going to stop you there. So uh, what we'll do is actually cut the onion in half before you peel it. I used to do that, but I wasn't sure if it's right. It's, it's much easier to peel. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's much quicker. See, that would yep. take me a lot more, a lot I'm more time. Take this off too. Okay. See, so much easier. Done deal. And we'll just brush right this off. Compost bowl. Perfect. So now I'm going to get to slice it. Any recommendations or do you just want me to go for it? Go for it and then I'll stop you. <laughs> of course. All right. So I'm going to Stop. Do so what Bob was doing was the, so the onion has kind of like a grain, right? right? Um, you always kind of want to cut with the grain. Okay. Uh, it just, it cooks up much better. It doesn't spray as much onion juice in the air, so you don't get as much in your eyes. You don't cry as much. I feel like it's going to happen. Okay. Okay. So we'll go this way. Yeah. So I'm going to stop you again. Okay. So I'll grab this knife and I'll kind of show you. So hold, so go back to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see these fingers? Yeah, I do. If that knife slips, it's going to go in your thumb or yep. it's going to go in there. So what you're going to do is put your fingertips flat. Yeah. So um, put them flat on the board and then we'll actually just hold them up. So you're kind of gripping the onion, Ooh. and then the knife is going to be in contact with your fingers. Yes. Just like this. Kind of like that. But you're, uh, no, so turn nope. your hand into your knife. So it's, yeah, exactly. But we'll turn the onion, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, instead of having the knife up off the board and then pushing down, what you're going to mm -hmm. do is leave the tip on. So we'll pull it up here a bit. Okay. And then you're just going to slide it, as opposed to chopping, you're going to slide through the onion and you can go forward or backwards as you cut okay but you're just going through the onion in a like a slide as opposed to a chop and then that's how you're going to get these nice even slices and so you're going to slide like this uh yeah but you don't even need to go as high you can okay. just kind of like um, i always imagine like the wheels of a train and how it has that oh that little uh, yeah, yeah 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 okay so but a little um yep. so you're getting a little too much Kind of okay. too fancy with it, I'd say. I, I do that. So just so if you start the knife up front like this. Okay. So pull it back here, and you can push it down. Mm -hmm. So and then just pull it back. So you don't need to push down at all. Just pull just back. And pa Ooh. See, see how much easier that There's is. No way a finger is coming off with that. Method. You just pull back. Just like so that. make sure you start up higher on the blade. Oops. Like yep. that. Okay. And then just pull back. And loosen your grip a little bit. You're. You're, you got like a yeah. death grip on yeah, it. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we still got all digits intact. So again, try and start up higher, and that way you're not up so high. You have more control over up the here. knife. You mean yeah. up here? Yeah, exactly. See, then you have to bring the knife up so high. Oh, that's genius. And then you can just kind of 
chop it up. But again, try and keep those fingers up because you don't want, you want the fingers to act as a guard, right? Excellent. Okay. Ben, I'm not crying yet. That's good. That's you know, there's been many a time when it's, it's, it's looked like I've been watching bad soap operas and just after, but no, I'm just cutting onions and just well, so full of A tears. sharp knife helps and the proper technique helps a lot too. Does a type of onion matter? Uh, yes and no, it's more the time of year. Really? Yeah, the time of year matters more than the type of onion because uh, a lot of these people have heard this many times, but I think it's important to go over it again. Mm -hmm. um, in the spring, the onions are sweeter because they're getting ready to push the greens up from the ground. Mm -hmm. So they're not as um, harsh to cut into. But in the winter, the tannins or the, I don't know what the chemical is, but whatever the chemical is that makes you cry is it hasn't converted to sugars yet. So that's what's making it worse. So in the fall and winter, the onions are harsher on your eyes than they are in the spring. That's so fascinating. Yeah. So the older the onion, the better it is. Okay. So I'm just going to turn this pot onto medium. We'll let right. that heat up. Good job. Look at that. They're all even. Ten fingers. That's perfect. Ten fingers. Well, two are thumbs, so. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is actually cut this guy up. Okay. So the technique here is we want to take the root off first. Okay. Um, and what we'll do is just kind of dip the point in mm -hmm. on an angle, just a slight angle, Yep. down, rotate, and then same thing. So we're just kind of going like that so we can pull the root out. So watch that thumb. Yeah. Okay. Down like that. More that way. <laughs> Kathy said it's very entertaining with the two of us. We do make a good team. There, there's Close. Close. We'll just oh, we'll wow. pretend. We'll pretend that you got all the way through it. Fair enough. Great job, Bob. Hey. Something went right. So um, what we can do now mm -hmm. is I feel like did we have cauliflower last week? I can't remember. I feel like I've been doing a lot of cauliflower. Nope. No? What did we have last week? Uh, I remember the passion flakies. Cuz oh right. Right, right, right. Right. Okay. So what we're gonna do is I'll just show you one. So we have all these kind of stems here, mm -hmm. but if we cut right through the florets, we're gonna get cauliflower everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So we're I gonna mean, all do my hair. exactly. Yep. What we're gonna do is actually just cut through the stems. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, and we're gonna use all of this. So we'll use the stems and everything, but we just want to break it up into smaller pieces. Can do. So we can puree it. So these are florets. Yes. Okay. So when the thing comes off the stem, that is a floret. Yep. In fact, that would be two florets. Yep. Interesting. Huh. Man, they're just, they're falling apart here. New plan. Let's just make some ranch dressing and destroy this cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. Now, this is big. Should I slice this one down the middle? Yeah. Okay, good. But what you'll notice is you don't actually, you don't need to go all the way through because once you get to here, you can just kind of pull it apart and okay. then you don't get that. Okay. So I'm just going to add a tablespoon of olive oil to this pan. I'm just going to throw the onions in. Did I tell you that I was actually at a cauliflower festival in Germany this summer? You did. That sounds... What was it called in German? It's called Blumenkohl. Blumenkohl. You know, it's... Uh, and in July, everyone's eating it. Uh, there was adult beverages and Blumenkohl all over the main square. It was quite I think, I think I like the name Blumenkohl better than I like the name cauliflower. It's like uh, Pomplemousse for grapefruit in French. Yeah, where do these things come from? Uh, that's a great name, though. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So we'll just go a little bit smaller on these. We can just break them up with our hands if we want to. And we are going to use this stem as well. Okay. Now, if we wanted to, we could roast the cauliflower before adding it into the pot and get this like really intense kind of sweetness out of it. We're not going to do that today, mm -hmm. but if you wanted to at home, you wanted to kind of take the soup uh, a little bit higher, absolutely you can do that. Get a nice deep roast on it and you're going to get this nice sweet kind of rich flavor in the soup. 400 degrees for? Yeah, for 20, 30 minutes. Okay. So the onions are here. We don't want too much color on them, um, but a little bit's okay. And I'm going to get this cauliflower out of the way. All right. And I'm going to get you to do some garlic out. 
garlic. Just uh, just two? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we don't need much because we don't have a lot of cauliflower. Right. Okay. So what are you doing? Oh, you're right. That's perfect. All right. Nope. So what you'll do now is actually just put the knife flat. Are you trained in CPR? Not well. Have you ever, like, done training in CPR? A long time ago. Okay, so imagine that you're doing CPR. Mm -hmm. So some people have a tendency to, like, slap the knife, but you I risk know. cutting yourself. Yeah. So it's just that one... That's it. ...little pop. Just, just to snap through the rib cage. Yep, and okay. then the peel comes right off. There you go. Generally much easier than this, but it comes off. See, I was going to get to that point of smashing it. But you don't need to cut the top off. But that's... Okay, that's amazing. So but the bottom? So I just have a mouthful of cauliflower. But the bottom right goes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of color on our onions here. And I'm going to add the cauliflower in. Let's come over. We'll come on over. Huh? A little bit of color. So I'll add the cauliflower in. Cut up small pieces. So because we're pureeing it, okay. you can just slice it. Oh, nice. But again, fingers. Yep. Uh, so I'll stop you there. So generally what I would do is actually slice it this way. This way, okay. You just get uh, nicer pieces. So onions down the grain and then garlic kind of on the side. Against like the grain, yeah. Against the grain. Onions with the grain, garlic against the grain. The, o the only real reason why I would do that is if you were putting in a pasta or something, you get smaller pieces. Yeah. As opposed to these giant long pieces of garlic. Okay. Nobody likes that. No. Watch those fingers. And you can throw that right in there. So because this garlic is cut nice and big, uh, we can throw it right in with everything. If we diced it or like minced this? it, yep. If we minced it, then we would have to uh, add it a little bit later on. And I'm just going to give this board a little clean. Okay, so we're just going to let that cook down for a few minutes and we'll add some chicken stock to it. Uh, what else do we need? And then it's just a little bit of nutmeg, some thyme, and some uh, salt and pepper. That's it? Yeah, and then we might finish it with a little bit of milk, but okay. we probably won't need to. Great. Okay, so our rice is almost done. Okay, so what we need to do is, I'll just take that off and let that sit for a second. So we're going to whisk in two cups of cold milk. Cold milk. And what we want to do is, as we're whisking, make sure we're pulling all the starch off the bottom of the pot, okay? Because we're gonna go back on the heat and if we leave that starch on, it's gonna burn. So it's really important that as we're whisking, we pull all that starch off the bottom of the pot. Right, okay. Okay. So. And this, this is the rice for the dessert today. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna bring this over here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's just beautiful basmati rice. We'll show. That was so easy. That was just doubling the water. Yep. And that's that's the, the standard ratio for basmati. Okay. It's two to one. Okay. So I'm going to get you to measure out two cups of milk. So that's one cup. So we're using whole milk? Whole milk, yeah. So whenever you're cooking, you want to use whole milk. Uh, as opposed to 2% or skim because of the higher fat content. Uh, the lower fat content milks have a tendency to split when they heat, come in contact with heat. Oh, that makes sense. So that's why we want to use the higher fat. Dump yep, it in a second right cup. in, right in. All right. I'm not sure for our international viewers what uh, whole milk is in countries like Britain or New Zealand, what it's referred to, but we're looking at 3.25% three, three yes, of, of fat. I'll take that from you. All right. And then we'll actually just kind of Mix this all up for a few minutes. You got it. Now this isn't where the whisking comes in yet. No, not yet. Okay. Um, a whisk, just because the pot's kind of small, okay. it's just not going to do a very yeah, good job. It's fine. And I'm just, we have everything in here. Uh, so the cauliflower is starting to kind of soften a little bit. And I'm just going to add the chicken stock in now 
and then we'll boil that until the cauliflower is cooked all the way through. And we're just going to add one liter of chicken stock. Would you recommend chicken stock as the best? Chicken stock's just good, a good like all-purpose yep. kind of liquid. Um, and I generally try and like make it, but I go through so much of it that I just can't keep up with it. So Hold on. that's why I buy it. That's fair enough. Because I mean, I use it to cook rice. I use it to cook potatoes. I use it as soup bases. I use it to make sauces. Mm -hmm. So I go through a lot of it. Okay, so we're gonna let that go. I'm gonna throw a lid on that pot. And we're just gonna cook it till the cauliflower's soft. Yeah, so you got like medium heat there? Yeah. All right. How's this looking? It's, uh, it's getting milky. Perfect. So to this, we're gonna add a quarter cup of sugar. All right. While you're doing that. I'm really glad you chose this dessert. I, I do a lot of work in Cuba and uh, what they call arroz con leche, which is rice pudding here, uh, it's very, very popular, especially in, in rural areas, because really you don't need much to get it together. You need yeah. A yeah, it's a very sugar, cheap, yeah. very cheap dessert. Sugar, rice, and a living cow, and uh, they have all three in rural Cuba, so it's good. Hey, Steve. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so in here we have just our rice and our milk. Bob's just making sure that the starch isn't stuck to the bottom, and I just added a quarter cup of sugar. And now we're going to grate in some nutmeg, mm. and we're going to add some vanilla too. So, Bob, I'm going to stop you for a second. It's good, because I'm spilling everywhere. Oh, my God. You're making a giant mess. That's all right. So I'm going to eat a grate about a quarter of this in here, and I'm going to go grab vanilla, because I forgot to Just grab. straight on grating away? Yep. Okay, now I'm unsupervised, people. I'm unsupervised. Have your Mike's emergency numbers ready. This is me grating nutmeg. It smells wonderful, actually. Okay, and I, I'm back a little bit more. A little extra nutmeg never hurt anybody. Um, if you're using powdered nutmeg, do be careful because there is a tendency to add a little bit too much and then it can be overpowering. But when you're grating it yourself, you're generally not going to grate enough to make it too bad. This is a first for me. Uh, where do you find just these regular nutmegs? Uh, just the grocery store. I should go there more often. You should. Ah, uh, Bulk Barn has them too. Stir it in, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Any, anywhere where fine foods are sold, I'd say. Mm hmm The key being fine. Yeah. Uh, and to this, we're going to add some vanilla bean. So this is vanilla bean paste. If you're using vanilla extract, um, you'll want about a teaspoon to half a teaspoon. But, but this, is, this is... This is paste. This is intense. Oh, man. Yeah. That takes me back. That smells good. Hello, Lucas. Thank you very much. The multiple camera angles are brought to you by Atlantic Livestream. Okay, so we're going to put this back on the heat. And we're going to move these back here, and we'll put that on the front burner. Front burner coming in. Just over a medium heat, and we need to stir that pretty much constantly. I'll be over here. Yeah. So Bob's going to take care of that. Um, and we're going to cook that for about 10 minutes because uh, we want it to kind of thicken up. We want to draw the starches out of the rice. Uh, and you can use arborio rice for this as well, which is what we would use to make risotto. Mm. Um, but we're just using basmati. Hi, Ruby. Thanks for coming. Uh, so after Bob's done whisking this for about 10 minutes, we're going to whisk in a couple tablespoons of butter and some raisins, and then we're going to finish it with two egg yolks. Uh, and then we're going to put it in dishes, pop it in the fridge, and let it cool. How's that sound? That sounds great. So if we, uh, if we, does it matter the amount of milk, depending on the, amount, the type of rice that you use? Um, I don't think so. I mean, with arborio rice, you're going to get way more starch out of it. Right. So you probably wouldn't need to try and make it as creamy. You just need to double whisk it. Yeah. Okay. Just, just careful. You're, just, you're almost spilling it everywhere, Bob. I'm so distracted. Part of the deal is you get to clean my kitchen afterwards. This, too, was, so. this was just added uh, to the original contract. <laughs> yeah. I added to the, everybody's contract after the, after the show. Okay. So, Bob, while you're doing that, yeah. I might as well get the sauce going for the haddock. Okay. So, have you ever made a bechamel before? No, but I've, I've consumed it. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, hello, Mike. Uh, what we're going to do is make a, 
a Mornay sauce, okay, which mm -hmm. is essentially a bechamel that has cheese in it. And we're going to use uh, Parmesan cheese. I have Gruyere on the ingredients list. You can use Gruyere if you want. We're going to use Parm because I had it in my fridge already. Perfect. Um, so what we're going to do is actually take two tablespoons of flour. We're going to take two tablespoons of butter. We're going to mix that up and then we're going to add milk to it. And once the milk thickens, then we'll add our cheese. That's great. And what we're going to do is actually spoon that over our fish. And we can even grate a little bit of nutmeg in there. Why not? We, we've got nutmeg. I we've just got it a minute ago. It's with us. Actually, I'm going to wait a second because we're kind of running out of burner space. Okay. But I'll get everything ready to go. Does anybody have any questions since we're at a bit of a standstill? There's a bit of a delay. So, a slight delay, okay. Yeah, so All there's right. like a... 10 second delay or something. No questions. It's smelling good in here. It does smell good in here, actually. And our potatoes are almost done, which is good news. So the potatoes are almost done, which means they're fork tender. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to drain those off and just set them aside for now because they're going with our fish and our fish clearly is not ready. But it's not gonna take long. I'm gonna move this back. Bob, how many languages do you speak? Uh, comfortably three, uh, but I can order a beer in 12. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Spanish, English, and French. The French, I would say, is functional. Uh, by Spanish, we're good to go. So, you know, next week we could do like, you know, cocinado con ben. Aquí en la cocina. I only speak the one language. Oh, that's going to be difficult. It's Klingon. That's the only language I speak. That's, a co that's important, you know. I don't actually speak Klingon. Oh. I'm not. Uh, not what I would say, a Trekkie. Uh, vanilla bean paste, where did I buy it? Uh, Sue, that's a great question. I think I bought this at Pete's. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I bought it at Pete's. I know that you can get it at Bulk Burn as well. Um, this is really expensive. The reason I bought it is because there's a big vanilla bean shortage. Um, and when I bought this like a month or two ago, this was all I could get. So that's why I have it. It's not something I would normally buy. Okay, so I just have two tablespoons of butter in there. It's melting. Um, and then we're gonna whisk in two tablespoons of flour. I'm using gluten-free flour, you don't have to. Hello, Suze. Nastasia, I'm hungry as well. I'm actually really excited for this because my belly is a rumbling. But that's all right. How's that looking, Bob? It's getting thicker. Good. That's I mean, cool. and there's, I feel there's nothing sticking on the bottom. There's no Perfect. Klingons on the bottom, if you were. Perfect. Uh, so we're, we're, we're doing good. That's what I like to hear. Uh, happy birthday, Kathy. I don't think this would dessert, this dessert would make the trip to Cape Breton on the shuttle. Uh, I'll make it for you next time I see you, though. Kathy is my wife's aunt. Oh, yeah. Well, hello, Kathy. And she's having a, a birthday? Apparently, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, many happy returns. Yes. So, Bob, you are the captain of the trivia team that I am on. Yes. How did you start that, and what got you interested in trivia? Well, I think I think it's always been appealing. I love to uh, I love to even bring it into my classes. To students are receive trivia questions, and at the end of the semester, those who have the highest score get a reward. Uh, haven't figured out what the reward is yet, but it is coming. But uh, it was basically uh, Halifax is a great is a great city for for trivia, and uh, in quiz night, and there's uh, about three places on Tuesday nights that offer uh, offer trivia. And honestly, Ben, I was just be coming out of a, uh, a lecture for three hours on a Tuesday night, and I was just craving a cold beer and some sort of a, a burger. And up come the, the trivia questions, got a few right, and then from there, realized I can't win this without friends. So it's a, it's a wonderful chance to connect with people, bring more people into your social circle. And the great part about trivia is that the more, how should I say, non-like-minded people you have on the team, the better it is. Yeah, our team is pretty varied. We're good. We have scientists, very prestigious scientists, who have published in some of the best journals. We've got a chef. We've got a geographer. We even have a theologian. So 
uh, if there's any questions about food or anatomy or Although, flag maps, I usually good. I usually get the food ones wrong, which is pretty interesting. Really? Remember last week we had the eggs. Oh, we had a herring problem, didn't we? We had a herring problem yes. and we had an egg problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's how you learn, and you keep going from there. But it's great, and I've also found Ben that trivia is also a bit of a universal. So, traveling in places like England or New Zealand, it's a wonderful spot to connect with uh, with local people there. There was one time that I actually was doing trivia in Manchester, and uh, for those who have been to Manchester, they take their trivia very seriously. And I went in there as a one-man army, and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, they actually gave me a copy of the trivia book to say, "Go study this and come back next week." <laughs> so. I appreciated their sentiment. Okay, so I have uh, my roux in here. It's a, it's a little bit runny, but that's okay. The gluten-free flour doesn't act quite the same as regular flour. Uh, and to this, I'm just going to add uh, about half a cup of milk, maybe a little bit more. Are you timing yourself on that? It's, it's feeling like we're about three minutes left. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We'll, we'll see. It's more about how done the rice, the, uh, rice is than anything else. So this sauce, we want it to be thick. We don't want it to be pasty or gummy, but we want it thick enough that it's going to coat the fish. But we also need to cook the flour out. If we don't take a few minutes and cook the sauce out, then it's just going to taste like raw flour and it's going to be pretty gross. I hate raw flour. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun. It ruins many a day. Uh, and it would help if I had my burner turned on also. Shut up, Mike. <laughs> I turned it off once my butter melted. So I'm just going to let that sit for a second. If you let it sit without watching it, you're going to burn it. So don't do that. But my burner's cold, so I'm just going to let that heat up. Yeah. Sales look good. Rice looks good. Yeah. You're getting there. So I'm going to add some raisins in there. So I have about a half cup of raisins. We're going to dump these in here. Woohoo! One, one ran away. Oh, no. They're all in there now. Uh, and we're going to put a little more nutmeg in there, too. And just a pinch of salt. So I've heard you say before, Ben, that things like a pinch of salt or something brings out the flavors. Yeah. It makes it makes the flavors speak, I think is what you're getting so at. So if if you read my blog this morning, how to not burn you would you would have noticed that uh, I talked all about how to taste your food today. Because I always say, you know, season to taste, but uh, people will often say to me like I don't know really what I'm tasting for. Mm -hmm. um, and the main thing is you just want your food to taste good. Um, and when it comes to salt the salt is something very cool where it actually kind of elevates all the flavors around it. So I liken it to playing a guitar. Um, so if, if I'm playing a guitar and I don't tune it, it can sound okay, but it's not going to sound amazing. Mm -hmm. Like if it's slightly out of tune, it's, it's going to be all right, but it's not yep. going to sound great. That's right. But if I take a second and I actually tune the guitar, then all of a sudden it sounds beautiful and, and harmonic and everything, okay. right? So that's what the salt does. It's the fine tuning. So it takes something that's okay and just kind of elevates it. Nice. But you should never actually taste salt, ever. Right. So if something is too salty, it's, it's, it's gone. Yep. Okay. Yeah, the idea is just that the salt is acting as a, a complement to everything or like as a... There's yeah, a, really is fine tuning. There's a roasted chicken I make sometimes, and the amount of salt that I, I tend to put over the skin is seemingly alarming. But when you actually have the chicken at the end of it, you don't taste any salt in it. Yeah, whatsoever. and that's that's a little different because none of that salt and is then really. You're spilling. I'm I, just saying, I know. Uh, you know. Well, you're gonna wash my floors when we're done. Ah, I, so I, I can't wait to see set. it. Um, and and with chicken, like a whole chicken, because that salt's not really getting into the meat. Right. And, and the fat's going to come out and wash it off. There it's, we it's go. Not as, it's not as, um, you don't have to be as cautious, cautious with it as you do with like a sauce or, or mm -hmm. something like that. Because you can always put more salt in, but you can't take you it can out. You can take it out. Except I know somebody's going to say with a soup and a potato, yes, if you have a little bit of extra salt in the soup, you put a whole potato in, it'll draw some of the salt out. But generally, you're kind of stuck. Yeah. 
So this gluten-free flour got all lumpy. So I'm adding a little bit of extra milk in this to try and smooth it out. And if it doesn't smooth out, I'll just pass it through a sieve and get all the lumps out. Oh, there we go. It's smoothing out. It's looking good. Yeah, it looks very nice. So bechamel is one of the classic five mother sauces. Um, mother so, sauces? Mother sauces. So in French cooking, there's five mother sauces. Okay. Um, bechamel being one of them. All right. Um, and so from this sauce, you can make a lot of different sauces. So what we're making is actually Mornay, which is essentially what a mac and cheese will be made of. Oh, yeah. Um, and then like, there's a lot of different variations on this. Okay, so this is nice and thick. I'm just going to let that cook out for another minute, and then I'm going to add the cheese in. So then what I'm seeing here is on this side with the, with the rice, it's, it's looking nice and thick at the top, and then when I sort of push it back a little bit, it's a little, little runny at the bottom. Yeah, is that so, what we're aiming for? Uh, we're going to go a little bit thicker, Okay. Um, but as it cools, it's going to thicken up as well, right? Because yes. all that starch is going to thicken it up, yep. and once we add the egg yolks, that's going to help to thicken it up too. We're going to let that go for another minute. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and show you what we're looking at with the bechamel. So it's it's still pretty liquid, but if I take a spoon, you can see it coats the back of it. And we have something in cooking called nappe. So if I take my finger and rub it across there, the line stays. That's what we're looking for. That's the consistency we want. See that? See how? Okay, okay. All right. So that's you, what we want. Nappe. Nappe, yeah. All right. Okay, so to this, I'm going to add my cheese. Oh, no. And I have about a half a cup of finely grated parmesan here. Mm -hmm. And again, you can use Gruyere or anything like that. You could even use cheddar with this if you wanted to. And we're just going to mix this in until the cheese is completely melted. Okay, Bob, I'm going to get you to take that off the heat. Turn it off? Yeah, we'll take it right off. Uh, and I'm going to get you to crack two eggs and separate the yolks and the whites. Okay. And try not to get any uh, any yolk in the white because I want the whites. And we had some issues with this last week. So, so. two so two yolks right in there, right? Yep. Here we go. So see the consistency of this now because of the cheese? Oh, looks good. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to thin it out a touch though. I got to admit, when, when I said haddock and you said gratin, I was pretty excited. That really made my day. Well, there's a few different ways to do this. You can just put breadcrumbs over it, mm -hmm. um, but I like this better because it's fattier and more delicious. Absolutely. All right, so let's... Yep, that's right. good. Put it there? Yeah, sure. And I'm just going to add a bit of salt and pepper in here too. And a touch of lemon juice. Beautiful. And then, so once you get that egg yolk done, I'm going to get you to just drop them right in that. Do you need to uh, whisk them up at all or just, just mix it in? Right in. Yeah, so drop them in and then mix it. Um, if you just let them sit, they're going to cook. Okay. So you want to make sure you're whisking them in and pretty we're, vigorously. And we're, we're hitting that into the rice pudding. Yeah. And there's enough heat in there that it's going to cook the eggs. Okay. So even though it's not on the... Uh, yeah, there's more than enough residual heat yeah. in there, so you don't have to worry about it. And I'm just going to take a little bit of lemon juice and drop it in my sauce here. I'm not even going to use the full half. I'm just going to, you can just throw that in the sink there. Okay, so that cheese sauce is starting to smell well. That's more A. Oh, oh, that's pretty tasty. There we go. Hey, Bob. Thanks, man. Yeah, this needs to be in our lives well and often. Yep. That is good. So you can add a bit of dill 
to okay. this sauce as well. And my mom used to make a version of it, um, which I didn't know until later on in life when I kind of figured it out for myself. But she would make the bechamel, and instead of cheese, she would add some hard-boiled egg, chopped up, mm -hmm. and some dill, and then put that over salmon. It was really delicious. It's like classic 70s yeah. dish, yeah. but super, super delicious. Right on. That, that, yeah. But no gelatin. No, no gelatin within sight. Which was... you, don't, you don't need it because the flour thickens it up, right? Right. right. Okay. So that rice pudding looks pretty much done. So we're just going to get some ramekins out. Yep. And we'll spoon that into the ramekins. So it'll probably be easier if you actually do yeah. this in reverse. Okay. So just bring the pot over. Do you need a hot spot or? Yeah, I'll grab one. Perfect. Because I'm quite impressed with your cutting boards here, Ben. I don't want to burn These them. These beautiful Ashworks cutting boards. They yes. are excellent. Perfect. There we go. And the future of this is in the fridge, I understand. Yes. Okay. But before we do that, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon over it. So we've got, there's vanilla, there's nutmeg, there's cinnamon, there's raisins. A little bit of everything. Oh man, that's good times. Now if you're ever traveling to Cuba and you want a good arroz con leche, I recommend going to the town of Vinales. It's about an hour and a half outside of Havana. Find the, uh, I forget the name of the restaurant, but it's where the bus lets you off and it's painted blue. Find that place. Okay, I feel like there's like a lot of blue restaurants in there's, Cuba. There's a few yellow ones too, but it's, it's that one blue one. That's what matters. Oh, I got a cinnamon juice. Sorry. That's a, hmm. I'll just mix that right in there. Hey, so we need some perfect. extra. Perfect. And we'll just actually put that in a bowl. Looks good. So we're going to dump that in there. And then we're going to get our haddock in the oven. We'll get some carrots going. And then it's going to be time for dinner. Last, last week, Mike got to eat like every course, course by course. But this week, it's all kind of going to come up at once. So mm -hmm. I can see him getting hungry back there. It's, it w this would make people hungry. If they're smelling what I'm smelling right now. This is, uh, this is really happening. So Rinse this off, we're good? Yeah, just in the sink's fine. We're just gonna pop these in here. Maybe. And we'll just let those cool. Okay, so next step. Mm -hmm. Let's actually get our carrots going and then we'll pop the haddock. So I'm just gonna wash this pot off. And Bob, if you wanna actually We'll peel these carrots. So you're gonna to get to use your favorite thing again, the peeler. So a potato peeler and a carrot peeler are the same thing. Exact same thing. All right, cool. You know, I know that that was a joke, but we don't want people getting scammed some, by some double purchases Some people here. ask that question. You know? So I would cut the top and the bottom off first and then that way you're not peeling anything you don't need to. like you've done that before. Just carrots, I'm your guy. Potatoes, it's a new frontier. What are Star Trek references tonight, man? That's, I have nothing to say. To no. I, I, I was thinking and nothing. Uh, Aaron, I, I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce that. Hennessy oh. says Bob is weird. Well, Aaron's a bit weird too. Sue but says, we, great job, guys. Thanks, But we Sue. do adore Aaron. How do you say her middle name there? We don't know. It's never been agreed upon. Wiener? Oh, Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. Okay. But it's probably, you know, a very different pronunciation. Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah, that's, that's just good. Okay, so we'll get these old peelings out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bob, what we're going to do with these carrots is a little bit different. We're going to do what's called a roll cut. A roll cut. A roll cut. Okay. So. This is, this is the advanced class now. It is. And I really like this cut for uh, stews 
um, or soups, or even just for roasting the carrots, or what we're going to do, which is just kind of steam them. So what we're going to do, now pay attention because this is going to get a little complex here. So what we're going to do is have the knife on an angle, kind of like a 45 degree All to right. the carrot, and we're going to make one cut. One cut. Okay? Yep. So now we're going to roll the carrot, just a quarter turn. Yep. And then we're going to make another cut. Ooh. And then we'll roll again and another cut. And what we get are these really cool, like, kind of oblong yeah. shapes. Yeah. Um, and these are really good, again, in stews uh, mm -hmm. because these edges soften, but then you get, like, a little bit of a crunch in the center. So they're delicious. So I'm going to let you do that. So the key here is always cut when the point is up. Okay. Okay. And we're, like, going about that far in? Yep. And then I turn. Mm-hmm. And we do it again. Watch this finger, Bob. That's the one. I don't want you to lose a finger. Nobody does. So I'll do that again. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that. So hear that? Oh, don't scary, do, scary, don't scary. do that. Oh. That's bad for the board and my knife, Bob. Okay. So it's just straight down. Just straight down. You don't need to push it out of the way. It's going to fall away. Yeah. All right. And, and last then, guy. And then this guy, I usually just kind of cut, just kind of like that. Cool. Uh, so you can go a little bit deeper on your angle. Okay. So there. Yep. And again, say yeah, exactly, same thing. Rock the knife as opposed to just drop it down. Wait, turn. Turn, turn, turn. We did it. To everything, turn, 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 man. There is a season. Turn, turn, turn. You're saying that. Mama's in the pub, is it? There we go. See, that's that's the trivia forte coming through. The music. My angle's getting a little bit screwed up here, Ben. That's okay. We'll still eat it. Yep, exactly. So I'm gonna before you make that last cut, see this finger? Because your, your hand's kind of shaky, I've noticed. So if you actually pull your hand back, and instead of having your finger up, grip it between your thumb and your index finger, just gently. You don't, like, mm -hmm. the knife should still be able to move around. And then just kind of wrap your fingers around. You might have a little more control over the knife. That's the that grip. was easier. That's the grip I generally go it's with. It's not a tennis racket. It's exactly. a knife. Exactly. Jeez. Okay. And then. Yep. Sure. Done deal. And now we're just going to pop these in here. Now, what I would normally do with these, we're not going to do it today because I didn't tell you to get all the ingredients, is I actually will put a tablespoon of honey in here, a tablespoon of cider vinegar, and a bit of thyme, mm -hmm. and then just cover the carrots with water. And we've done this before, actually, months and months ago. Uh, and then I cook the carrots uh, until the water reduces, and then I'm left with this syrup, and I serve the carrots in that syrup. That's great. So that's, that's honey, Honey, thyme. vinegar, thyme, and water. Huh. So I'm just going to get the carrots on, mm -hmm. just a little bit of salt in there. Okay, just like that. So haddock. This is not going to take long in the oven, which is nice. So what we're going to do is a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to just rub that around. Perfect. Then we have these haddock fillets. They're kind of mangled and small. This is with all they had at the grocery store that wasn't frozen. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just going to kind of lay them, we'll kind of fold them fold over them a bit. Fold them over? Yeah. So I'll do these two and then you can do the other two. Perfect. There we go. That's looking good. And now, before we put the sauce on, we're going to season those with salt and pepper. So I'm going to let you do this. So. I'm going to stop you there. So remember how, I guess it was different. So with this, you want to actually come up nice and high. Really? Because you get a much more even spread of the pepper. Look at that. Okay. You don't get clumps. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the salt. I might need a stool, but. <laughs> Perfect. And then the same thing with the salt. And this time we will actually. Do that sprinkly event. Yeah. Okay. Good. So there we go. Uh, so Helen's asking about why carrots taste better in the summer. Helen, it, straight up, is just because that's when they're supposed to grow. Um, you know, carrots, 
typically would be stored throughout the winter in a root cellar or underground or wherever. Um, and the, the flavors are changing as they, as they change because they're, pre they're preparing to shoot back up out of the ground as they would in the spring naturally. Um, so having carrots in the winter, that's why they're not going to taste as good in the summer. They're not going to be as sweet. They're not going to you know, have the, the same crunch. They're just not going to be as good. Uh, and I don't know if there's anywhere where you can get really good carrots this time of year. Um, Argentina. Argentina, apparently. What I would recommend is actually roasting the carrots if you want that sweetness to come out in a really nice flavor. Just roast them on a high heat, get them really nice and caramelized, and that's going to kind of replace that nice carrot flavor that you're looking for. Okay, so. Enough salt? You're good with that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And now, we're just going to spoon this right over here. Check it out. And we want like a generous amount of this sauce. And because the sauce is already hot, that's going to help the fish cook. Because haddock's a quick cooker, is it not? Yeah, it does not take long. I know there's probably some cod fans watching, but uh, the beauty of, of haddock is that it's quick. And uh, there's a lot of it when yeah, you go to the grocery store. And cod, I'm, I'm still not convinced that the fishery is okay. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't generally eat a lot of cod. But fair enough. Personal preference. Okay, so we have our fish. Just like that, and we're just going to pop this in the oven. It's on 400 degrees. It's going to take like 12 minutes. Okay. So right in. Timer, 12 minutes. Boom. 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. Oh my God. So we have our carrots on. They're already starting to simmer. That's perfect. So let's look at our soup. Beauty. Hmm. Smells like cauliflower. Mm -hmm. So. Bob, yes, we sir. need some nutmeg in here because we didn't put yeah, nutmeg we in gotta, we, we gotta do that. We need some nutmeg in there, so the nutmeg's right here. Okay. We need some thyme, uh, which we probably should have put in before, but I forgot to, so we're gonna put it in now. I'm using dried thyme because I realized that I had a whole bunch of it in my cupboard and I usually just use fresh stuff, so I'm trying to go through it, but you can always put fresh thyme in here. That's enough. So we don't want too much nutmeg in here because it will overpower the cauliflower. And I'm just going to put a nice big teaspoon of uh, dried thyme in here. Thank you. Okay. We're good? Yeah. So then we just go to puree it. Doesn't even matter to stir it up because we're going to puree it, right? Yeah. So I'm going to get you to do this and I want you to be very careful because it'll splash up on you and it'll burn you. Okay. So what you want to do, because if you can see in here, there's not too much liquid. We'll, we're definitely going to have to add some milk to it, mm -hmm. but we want to kind of puree it a bit first. So you're going to tilt it up and then you're just going to kind of zap it down here. And if you need to push this here. stuff down, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you need to push this stuff down, stop the blender, pull it down, and then make sure the blender's always under the surface. Right. So we're, we're under the surface of the liquid tilted. Yeah. And we're using an immersion blender. You can put this in a regular blender. Um, if you do, make sure that you pop, like usually the blender has a thing in the center, yep. pop that off because otherwise the pressure is going to build up and it's going to explode. It's going to go all over you and your kitchen and this is super hot. I've done that to myself. I've seen other people do it. It sucks. And it'll get all over your ceiling. It'll get everywhere. So this make sure- This is the most sure dangerous soup I've ever encountered. It is. So make sure you take that little lid out if you're using all a right. regular blender. Be good. Now why don't, yeah, we'll be okay. Actually, I'll plug it in. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one more safety lesson on this. Make sure you have this, this piece on here before you plug it in. Because there's been a few times where I plugged it in first and then I was like, I have my thumb up here. Oh, no. Yeah. So make sure you put this together first. Oh, man. Because this will this will rip your finger off pretty quick. Okay. All right. So tilt it on the angle. Yeah. So I might actually get you to come over here, Bob, just so you have a little more slack on the line. Where am I going to sit where you sit? Yeah. So can you put that red thing right down there? Yeah. And I'm going to move the computer out of the way for a sec. There we go. This is just a one-speeder? Uh, yeah. Careful pointing that at yourself, though. No, it's going to tip it up, though. Yeah. There we go. So up is high and down is low or something like that?
So as he's pureeing it, uh, liquid's gonna come out of the cauliflower that's kind of absorbed into it. So that's why it looks like there's more liquid than was there originally. You're doing a great job, Bob. Thanks, buddy. Careful. So we got some uh, items up here that we just need to kind of... Yeah, so yeah, so I would just flick them down there with that. Perfect. Or at this point, I would say because you have enough liquid, you could probably just leave that flat. All right. There we go. I think the bigger pot was the right call. The only thing with the smaller pot is then you have um, less surface area, so you have a deeper... Right. Right? Some renegade cauliflower that just doesn't want to die. So we're gonna add just a touch of milk in here. That milk changed the whole look appearance of this thing. Okay, so I'll stop you there. So there's still a few lumps in there. Okay. Ooh. So good the I'm sure. I'm sure it does. Okay, let's taste it, Bob. All right. So we're diving in. Mike, I haven't let you taste anything yet. The nutmeg's coming through. Ben, that's great. So that's pretty good, but we can make it better. I like this. So if you notice, it's, it's kind of flat. Like there's mm -hmm. nothing that's really kind of popping out of there. So all we're going to do is just a little tiny bit of acid. And now we'll taste it again. That's why I saved my spoon. That's right. See the difference? You described the first one as flat, and this is more rounded. Yeah, and we're gonna add just a pinch of salt, and then that should do it. Just that tiny, it, tiny uh, little bit of acid completely changes the whole pot of soup. That's incredible. Okay, so that's done. Let's dish out some soup, shall we? Uh, I don't have any matching. Everybody's getting different bowls. Perfect. Heather Carroll said great blending, Bob. Thank you, Heather Carroll. All fingers are intact. Mike, was it you with the idea for the soup restaurant? Oh yeah. Soup here it is. Yeah. Don't steal it. I didn't want to say the name on live on the internet, but soup there it is. Suze. And it turns out that little cauliflower was just kind of the perfect, perfect little size. Yeah. Soup, soup, soup. Which is good, which is bad. Okay, a little bit of lemon zest just to finish it. Uh, I was singing uh, drugs, 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 which are good, which is bad, but about soup. You know that old uh, Heritage Minute? Guys? Yeah. That was Guys? a Heritage Minute? Yeah, uh, or no, it was... Uh, it was a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Drugs, yeah. drugs, drugs. Which are good? Which are bad? <laughs> that's not... Yeah. That's not... <laughs> it's a confusing message. We're out of spoons. I 
You still have one? And, you know, we'll do a little fresh pepper over the top. Uh, Bob, you can take that one. Suze. Michael. Well, uh, let's, uh, oh, oh, it's a good viewing. Oh, that's how we doing? Nice. That's delicious. That's incredible. And what do, we, what do we have in there? A little cauliflower, we have some chicken stock, some thyme, some Onions. nutmeg, onion, garlic, and then uh, salt, pepper. It's a thyme, nutmeg, and a uh, touch of lemon juice. That's it. Now, if we roasted the cauliflower, this would be a little sweet. It would have that kind of like a right. little bit of sweetness, but I don't think it really no, needs no, it. No, 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 it's good. It's tangy. Uh, what would you, would you put anything on the cauliflower to roast it? Just salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil. Okay. But we seem to be in a minor cauliflower crisis here in Nova Scotia. Yeah. There just seems to be so few of them. But again, last last week or the week before, they were on sale for like two bucks. And they were huge, so I don't wow. know what's going on. Okay. That's delicious. It's not too heavy. Oh, man. It's nice and light. This is like a take-to-work soup. I would, uh, I would definitely do that. Oh, thank you, Helen. Helen says she liked reading my blog on uh, seasoning. Yeah. Spice up your life. It'll probably get me pulled down. It's like in Spice Girls. <laughs> They're making a comeback. No, it's copyrights. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Okay, that soup is delicious. We're not done yet, though. Because we've had some carrots that have been boiling away for a bit. And we have to finish the potatoes. Oh, boy. So we have our potatoes here. They're just boiled. They look pretty boring. Wow. Right? So what can we do with them? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to add some butter to it, because why wouldn't we? Nice big chunk of butter. Bob, I'm going to get you to throw some salt and pepper in there. Uh, oh, I'm good at this now. Where am I throwing it? In the potatoes. <laughs> Uh, it would be a good keto option for sure. I mean, there's nothing, nothing in it that's gonna go against a keto diet. Okay, perfect. So the other thing we need to do, Bob, is chop this up. Okay. So with herbs like this, uh, with hardier herbs like parsley, it's okay. With something like sage, you don't want to use this technique because it'll bruise the herbs too much. But what we're gonna do is just ball this up and do a nice tight ball. Make sure your fingers are flat, and then same thing as before. So you're. You're not jamming the knife down, you're gliding it through. See how I'm doing that? That's awesome. So I'm gonna let you so, finish that. So ball it up. Watch that finger again. Oh yeah, that one. Technique's improving. It Thank is. you. And I hope your technique's improving at home too. That's very handy. I mean, we get into bad habits that just don't get corrected, right? So. Well, and a lot of people have just never really been shown. So at this point, what I'm going to get you to do is instead of trying to ball this back up, is actually just hold the knife in that same grip, mm -hmm. but don't wrap your fingers around, just same mm -hmm. grip, and then kind of find the counterbalance point, and then just like that. Make sure those fingers are held up, though. Yes. All right. So kind of like, like that? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. A bit of it was running away at the end, but we got it. And now, Bob, I'm going to throw all that parsley right in these potatoes. Is this a sprinkle from a high, or no? We'll just, just throw it right in. It? Just throw it right oh. in there. Perfect. And now we've taken these boring boiled potatoes. We've added color, we've added flavor, we've added a little fat, and just that, that little tiny bit of parsley, that little tiny bit of butter and that salt and pepper is going to completely change the flavor of these. Okay? Carrots are done, they're soft, they're fork tender. So last thing is let's check the haddock. 
trust the oven mitts? Always. Uh, generally in kitchens, you won't see oven mitts, and except like maybe in the pastry department, usually we just use towels. Really? Yep. Is it um, just easier that way? Quicker. Quicker. Much quicker. Okay. So this haddock is donezo. I can tell just because it's kind of coming apart and just by touch. Yep. But I want a little bit of color on this haddock. Me too. So what we're going to do, let's turn this off. We're going to pop the broiler on to high. We're going to let that heat up for a second. And then we're going to broil the haddock and get some nice color on it. And in the meantime, we can start plating everything else. So we'll get a couple plates out. We'll use the fancy plates today. Isn't that nice? See, it brightens up the most. It sure does. The blue Monday or whatever we're calling it. And the gray Monday? The gray Monday. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Uh, kitchen's a mess, but it's not as bad as last week. Last week it was a pretty big mess. Colin was a... <laughs> Colin was a messy sous chef. Let's, <laughs> let's say that. What were you preparing? I, I, we tried to figure it out. I, uh, uh, chicken Alfredo. Okay. We did... Kale salad. Kale salad and passion flakies. That's what we did. Okay, yeah. There'd be some um, things flying around there. Oh, he actually did a really good job. It was, it was just like, because it was a lot of bowls. So there were just big bowls right. all over the place. Okay. So, let's get this set up. So if you're wondering where I got these beautiful plates, Value Village. They have great artwork there too. Do they? Sometimes. Well, I went to the weird Dartmouth flea market to see if I could get some plates oh. and <laughs> I went there once. You didn't get plates and I, something else. No, I I didn't want to be in there for any longer than I had to be. That's, that's okay. So carrots, I'm just getting a little bit of butter, a little salt and pepper. Yeah, if you ever get a chance to go to the Dartmouth Flea Market, take a friend and possibly a machete with you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if I've offended anybody who goes or works at the Dartmouth Flea Market, but it is a... Slightly terrifying place. It is. It, that's a good way to put it, Mike. It's interesting. So we have these nice, lovely carrots. And I'm using the tiniest spoon in the world to do this. Um, Steve says I have to smell the board. Yeah. So Steve is the guy who makes the boards. Okay. Him and his wife Donna. Mm -hmm. um, and he was here one day when we were talking about some stuff, and I like. Went into the other room for a second, and I came back, and he was smelling my board. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Um, but he just wanted to make sure I was taking care of it. But until he explained it, I was a little concerned. So he, he actually said, Bob, you got to smell the board. I'm next. I think it just smells like parsley right now. The, um, so just in the carrots, just salt, pepper, Salt, butter. pepper, butter. That's, That's it. it. You don't need much. And then we have these really nice potatoes. And somehow we did seven instead of eight, so someone's getting just one potato. I'll just take that one. I mean, look how pretty this looks already. It's really good. We don't even have the fish on it yet. Okay, so that broiler is not going to take too long to heat up because the oven's already at 400 degrees. So we're just going to pop this in here. And it should only take two or three minutes. And we just want some nice color on there. Does anybody have any questions? Bob, do you have any questions? I don't. Well, that's I think it's great. I'm impressed with the use of the parsley, though. I usually avoid parsley as a something because I don't fully understand it. But it smells like parsley. It, just, it smells like parsley. Mm -hmm. But it smells delicious. It does. It smells delicious. Um, sorry, what were you saying? I'm just saying parsley is something I usually don't go for because I, I don't fully understand where it 
it should be and not be, but this looks like it's exactly where it needs to be. Yeah, so an application like this um, on pasta, actually like any pasta, finish it with a little bit of fresh parsley, it just kind of gives it this really nice kind of fresh flavor mm -hmm. that you wouldn't otherwise get. Right. Um, yeah, and even like, like last week with the chicken Alfredo, because we did more of a classic Alfredo than a North American one, we just finish it with a bit of parsley and it just kind of brightens okay. everything up. Uh, so Helen, I'm using just sea salt. More often I use kosher salt, but I couldn't find any when I ran out. So I ended up buying sea salt. Um, if I was using a garnishing salt, I would use something called fleur de sel. Uh, but I don't, you don't need that for this. Just use um, your regular salt. I really prefer to stay away from iodized table salt because I find it has a really harsh flavor and it doesn't dissolve properly when you're cooking. But that's personal preference. Ooh, ooh, it's coming. Yeah, some table salt actually has sugar in it. Look at the ingredients box, it's there. Is it sugar or is it like, like sucralose or something that's like an uh, anti-caking agent? I don't know that much. Because most table, well, most salts have anti-caking agents in it. And, and it would be a sugar that they would use for that. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. This like is something. Like 40 more seconds. I'm so hungry. Mike is like passing out from hunger over there. Mike doesn't look good. We, need, we might need to call somebody <laughs> for him. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Brown. So we'll take a look at this. This guy right here. This is my science fair project for the year. And I'm very excited to eat it. Okay. And there's just a generous quantity of that sauce. Yes. Yeah, because the, the, I mean, the sauce really is the only flavor in, in the fish. I was going to say, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just so good. Oh, Ben, what have you done? That's amazing. So, oh, the smell coming off this. This is brilliant. The cheese. Ooh. Okay. Right on top. You're not getting this at that place that we play trivia at, who I'm not going to name. That's true. Beauty, oh, beauty, beauty. Sus. Good sir. Thank you. Wife. My call. Thank you. And me. That's bad. Well done. It's coming apart real nice. Come on. That sauce is fantastic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. Wait till you try that potato. That's no ordinary potato. No. And it's just that, well, A, it's the fingerling potato, which is pretty delicious on its own. Yep. But then that little bit of salt, pepper, butter, and parsley. So, Helen, Himalayan pink salt, it's chemically pretty much identical to every other salt. Um, there's just one extra molecule that's attached to it to make it pink. It's not any better for you. And if somebody tells you, they're bullshitting you to try and get your money. Um, there's so many different salts mm. out there and most of them are just a scam. It, there's, there's not really any difference chemically between any of them. The only difference between uh, table salt and everything else is that they add iodine to it. Um, because in the 30s and 40s, people were getting giant goiters on their neck because they didn't enough iodine in their diet. We have enough now, so it's not really necessary. Um, 
but yeah, try try not to get uh, into buying crazy salts because you can spend tons of money. You can get into black salts and all kinds of things that they look cool, and if that's why you're buying them, then that's fine. But if you're buying them because you think that they're good for you, you might want to do a little more research. That's all I'll say about it. What were people eating back in the was it, 30s and 40s where they were getting these? They just weren't getting enough iodine because they like people living inland weren't close enough to the ocean, so they weren't getting the iodine in their diet. Mm -hmm. And that mostly what they were eating was like potatoes and beef. We'll do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Happy? You hit it out of the park, man. You really did. So the what was it what was your concern with Haddock before? My thing with Haddock is that I'd always kind of see it being in a rush, not really know what to do with it. So I, I put it into a pan and try to pan fry it like a like another fish. Maybe even in, in a way that you do some of the more red meat fishes. And the thing would break up and then I would Plan B would try to make some tacos with yeah. it, and at this point, everyone's in tears. Um, this, the thing actually stays together on a plate. And my, my biggest thing with haddock was that it would always fall apart, and it wouldn't take to some of the seasoning, pan frying that uh, you yeah. expect otherwise. So it, haddock is a very flaky fish, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if it's overcooked at all, it's just going to fall right. apart. Mm -hmm. um, and especially pan cooking it, you really need a breading on it to hold it together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Does it fry well? Like, can you deep fry it? Or? You can, but again, you have to batter it or bread right, it. Right, right. And here with you, today was what, 12 minutes, 400 degrees? 12 like minutes, that? yeah. Yep. But there was a hot sauce that went onto it. Mm. So without the sauce, it would probably be 15, 13 to 15 minutes. That sauce is just making it happen. And it's nice following that soup. Mm -hmm. Okay, because these people don't just want to sit there and watch us eat. I thought that was actually, the, whole, the whole event. Let's tuck into these quick. We can get back to our mains. All right, very good. So let's, we're going to use forks because I don't have any spoons left. Fair enough. Let's give these a try. Just a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. The raisins, cinnamon on top. That's not a um, overpowering gut busting dessert. That's no. almost a little bit refreshing. Delicious. Well done, Ben. Bob, thank you so much for coming, my it's friend. It's been a pleasure. We look forward to you back on the trivia circuit soon. Absolutely. Um, thank you to Atlantic Livestream for making this look so beautiful and the multiple camera angles. Thank you to Ashworks Cutting Boards. And thank you for, to T-North Organic Carbonated Iced Tea. And, of course, thank you to you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, the recipes will be on my Facebook page tomorrow. Unless I forget like I did last week and then they'll be on on Wednesday. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the show. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, and I should say too, if you do enjoy this show, uh, you can now support it on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is essentially like a membership site where you go you can, for as little as a dollar a month. You can kind of support this so that I can keep having guests like Bob on. We can keep having it look so good and we can keep buying the food and everything. So it's just patreon.com forward slash Ben Kelly Cooks if you want to take a look there or you can find it on my Facebook page. Guys, thank you so much. I'll be back next week. I don't know who my guest is. I don't know what we're making, but I know it'll be fun. I'll see you then. Thanks again to everybody, and thank you, Bob. Have a good night, guys.